Hello everyone. Sorry for the lack of updates recently, the last couple of months were just terrible and I didn't ha really have time to finish everything I wanted to. I recently updated all my scripts, packs and extensions to support Photoshop 2020 and I decided to make a short video about the panels I'm working on. The panels to expect in the next several months. The first one is Layer Factory, which is longer overdue. I remember I was saying to some people that it's going to be released in two weeks, more than a year ago. This panel is all about layers, about creating and modifying them. I'm not going to show everything it can do, because it has a lot of different functions and requires its own video, but I want to speak a little bit about the functions I use the most. The panel consists of different separate modules, and the ones that are not in use can be easily hidden and uh, accessed later, so don't be intimidated by the amount of buttons here. One of its major functions is layers creation. Layers and adjustment layers creation models can have whatever items you want. So let's say I want to create a simple normal layer. I press my uh, panel hotkey and click normal. So, and I have my normal layer. Uh, I mean, it's fascinating, but not that interesting. Uh, now let's say I want to create an overlay layer that's going to be clipped to the active one. I hit my panel hotkey and click overlay while holding the control key on my keyboard. And boom! In one click I created a new layer, clipped it and set its blending mode. Next I will make a selection and create a clipped linear dodge layer, uh, but this time in addition to control I will also hold shift key. With the shift key selection is added as a layer mask. Uh, also you may have noticed that the panel closes automatically every time I create a new layer. That's an option on the panel. This way I don't have to close the panel myself and it doesn't take any screen space. But if I wanted to, I could have just docked it with the other panels. The same way uh, as before, I can create adjustment layers. Let me quickly add the uh, curves here. Uh, now I want to show you a multi-move. Quite often I find myself in a situation when I want to move a selected area of several layers. For some reason, this is still impossible to do in Photoshop, so I made my own get the version of this behavior. I have this robot guy and I want to make his leg larger and move it a little. The problem is, however, there is a base layer, shadow layer, details and hue saturation adjustment layer with a mask. This would be a nightmare to do in Photoshop, and we, but with Layer Factory I can select all the layers, make my selection and use multi-layer move command. Multi-move module also allows to repeat the transform, clone the selection and copy or cut the selection to new layers, effectively separating the layers. Next cool little thing is Symmetrify. It can apply symmetry to selected layers across the last created guide or a path. I have assigned this function to a hotkey, so when I need a mirror copy of a layer, I press it and boom. And as I mentioned, the sym symmetry can also use a simple path as a symmetry plane. So I can do something like this. A few versions ago, Adobe has included painting symmetry to Photoshop. The issue is, however, that if I create a selection or want to use some existing pixels in my symmetry. It's not going to work. With Symmetrify, I can easily mirror all the pixels I want across the guide or a path. And super quickly, two more things. Cut to a layer. Mm, this will cut a selection or the whole document into a new locked layer while ignoring all the layers above the active. This is extremely useful when working with blended layers or adjustment layers. For example, if I put an overlay and color balance here, and I simply make a layer from selection. All these layers above will affect the merged layer, while with the layer from selection they won't. And uh, clip layers. This allows to clip selected layers to target layers. Like, let's say I have this robot guy who is cut into pieces for animation, and I want to have a gradient and a color lockup filter on top of it. Uh, on top of all the parts. But for export, I'd want all these layers merged with every part of the robot guy. So I mark target layers, select the layers I want to apply, and boom. Other modules on the panel allow to create and load channels, fill layers with stretched parts or selection, to create groups from layers, feeder selection, bike layers to normal, and work with paths. Layer Factory will be available quite soon, mm. I would say in two weeks, but then again maybe in a year. 
uh, the next panel I want to speak about is modificator. So I have the scripts pack, script writer, and several of the scripts it has deal with different settings of brushes, like size, rotation, opacity, etc. The problem with scripts, however, is that there is no interactivity. I don't know the current, the current value and the value after the script is used, and the set value is always the same. I mean, if my script that changes brush, uh, brush angle is set to 45 degrees, and I want to change of 20 degrees, I'm out of luck. So the idea of modificator is to have some interactive controls of the brush, of the brush tool and uh, other tools, similar to what brush panel provides, but on a panel that can be heavily customized with the settings I use the most, and also so it wouldn't uh, take a lot of screen space. For example, currently I have my brush selected, and on the panel I have a bunch of controllers, my favorite ones, uh, the ones I use a lot. Brush angle, it's always here for me. I don't need to open this huge right button menu and close it every time I want to change a brush angle. The way that angle dynamics work, yes, it's there. Quite often I switch between dynamic angle being off using the pen tilt and direction. Just look at this, one click and I changed it from off to tilt and I changed the angle of the brush tip in the same time. To make these adjustments using the brush panel, I'd have to have this huge panel opened I change the angle in one tab, switch to another, click, choose, this click, blah blah, oh, just takes so much time. Some of the models on Modificator are custom ones, like these color sliders. The specific thing about them is that uh, those, ha those sliders have locked lightness. What this means is, say I have this uh, color selected, and if I change hue to yellow, Photoshop will preserve brightness of the color, but you can see that visually the, this yellow is much lighter. If I select my violet back and change the color with the modificator hue slider, it will keep the color lightness. The same goes for saturation slider. If I have a saturated color selected and change the saturation with the Photoshop color panel, you can see that uh, the color becomes more, more and more bright visually. Uh, if I use my saturation slider on the modificator, the lightness remains the same and I don't get these ugly splashes of brighter and darker spots. Another cool custom thing I have here is an eyedropper. If I want to sample a color from this overlay layer and continue to paint, uh, to paint with its color, normally I'd have to switch to eyedropper tool, select current, sample my color, switch to whatever mode I used before, and finally switch back to the brush. I mean, seriously, we're not getting any younger here. On the modificator, I have a model with the active eyedropper setting. And while I have my brush selected, I can just click current, sample the color, and click the setting I had before. So it's three clicks instead of 30 like before. Every model on the modificator can be hidden, uh, changed in size, and changed in some other way. Like this slider, if I make it larger, I'll get all the input it represents, including the separ separators I can snap to with shift key. And this little guy without a name, it's a wet brush setting with an option to hide the name so it doesn't take any screen space. And when I switch between tools, uh, the settings on the panel also change depending on the active tool. Gradiator is another thing that I didn't touch in a long time. It's a panel that helps to work with gradient maps. First of all, it can create a gradient map from an image or selection. This function is also available on my free panel Palitator, but, uh, but on Gradiator the algorithm was vastly improved and um, makes much more sense to have it here. The main gradiator feature, however, is that it gives more control over the gradient nodes. For example, this gradient is made from a darker image and to properly apply it to a lighter one, I can move a bunch of nodes in the same time, making sure uh, that the gradient influences the values I want. If I have a single color that's too strong, I can hold and drag the knot down to blend, to blend it between two adjacent knots. If I have a color that I want to put on a gradient, I can locate its position to know where it belongs, and I can change the brightness and the saturation of a knot using this larger color box. Next is Transformator. I've started working on it quite a long time ago, and at the moment it has some basic functionality but I sort of hate the interface, so if you have any advices on that, please, I'd love to hear some. 
The idea is to transform and clone a layer or layers using specific transformation settings. Um, I actually wonder if I should call it duplicator. Anyway, I have my layer selected and let's say I want to make 12 duplicates around this point. So I set 12 clones, rotation 360 divided by 12, custom pivot, path point. And boom. Well, I mean, a trained Photoshop person would say, uh, but you can uh, make uh, one transform and repeat it while holding Alt to duplicate. Yes, but also no. You see all my clones are smart objects, hence they are editable. For some weird reason, Photoshop uh, doesn't allow to call for repeat transform with a um, smart object. Uh, stupid, but true. Mm, but here's more. If I have several layers selected, I can clone those two and choose if I want my clones to repeat the uh, layer's order or randomly pick from the selected ones. And also I can use paths to drive clones. Uh, let me give you a quick example. I have a thorn here and the structure that I want to cover with, with its clones. So I start to draw a simple paths where I want the clones to be and their direction. Then in Transformator I set use paths for clones use paths for position, use paths for rotation, uh, and for scale I want them to be slightly random on Y. And boom. And the last thing for today is a select orator. That's my newest member of the family. I only started working on it in two weeks ago as a weekend project, and I want to keep it simple. It's about making selections. So here I have three different documents, and I want to be able to load some selections. Here in the first document, I have my selection layers in a special group, in the second document, I want my selection to be based on clipping masks. And uh, in the third document, I want my selections to be channels. By default, Selectorator looks for a group with a green color label. Let me right click on this eye, uh, eye icon and set a green color. The, the layer names appear on the panel. And now I have this icon to load selection, or I can ignore the icons and use key combinations. Click will load the selection, shift plus click will add to existing selection, alt plus click will subtract, and shift plus alt plus click will intersect with existing selection. If I add more layers to the group, they automatically appear in the list. Or I can simply add the current layer from the flyout menu. In the flyout menu, I can change the way selection list is created. In the second document, I don't want to have a group for layers to select. And uh, if I simply change uh, layers labels to green, nothing will happen. For them to be recognized by the panel, I'll switch from user group to use layers. And here they are. The third option is to use channels. It works basically the same with the difference that it's going to use all the available channels apart from the main ones. Here in this document, I have a bunch of channels to select from and my list is populated by them. Uh, well, that's it for now. Thank you for watching. Please let me know if you have any questions, comments, or general life advices. Um, have a great day, and bye.